Ideas for clinical trials come from a variety of sources. They can come from patients, they can come from doctors and clinicians. The clinical trials unit is open to ideas from any source. The Ad Aspirin trial is a good example of ideas coming from any source. About eight years ago, an 84-year-old man turned up in my office waving a paper at me saying he wanted to talk to me about aspirin and cancer. His name was Jeff Venning. He was a medical doctor interested in clinical pharmacology. Obviously, he was retired by this time. He put forward the idea to me that aspirin might have a role in the treatment of cancer. I started reading the papers and got a few colleagues involved in discussing the ideas. And actually, we found there was a reasonable body of evidence here started pulling together all the evidence, both in terms of observational data, the scientific data, and also the clinical trial data, which was very limited. And it showed that actually there was a real opportunity here for aspirin to be tested in this setting. We put together the Ad Aspirin trial as a consequence of that initial discussion and our subsequent work on it. Sometimes the idea for new clinical trials comes from the systematic reviews that we've done here at the MRC Clinical Trials Unit. A systematic review can help by giving us a clear picture of what's going on. Um, it's a little bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle. So if you imagine you've got a bunch of trials that um, all gave different results, um, those trials are a little bit like the pieces of the puzzle. And so the systematic review gathers together those pieces and puts them together and then you end up with a much clearer picture about what's going on. Systematic reviews can lead to new ideas for trials when they show that pieces of the puzzle are still missing. And in that case, then you need new trials to fill in those pieces. This is what I'm talking about. So, so if you've seen a forest plot before... Another way that systematic reviews can lead to new trials is if a systematic review gives a very clear picture of which is the best treatment. That treatment then becomes the standard treatment in that particular group of patients. And then a new treatment that comes along would then be compared with that standard. A good example of a systematic review leading to a new trial is one that was done by us and that compared the effects of different types of chemotherapy for women with advanced ovarian cancer. And what we found was that one particular combination of drugs, three drugs, um, was very good at helping women to live longer. The problem with that group of three drugs, when they're given together, they can produce quite nasty side effects. The systematic review also showed that another single drug looked quite good and it had less side effects. So what we did in the unit was to launch the ICON2 trial with collaborators worldwide. And the ICON2 trial compared that combination of three drugs with this single uh, drug with less nasty side effects. And what the ICON2 trial showed was that single drug was just as good as the combination of drugs at helping women to live longer. But the good thing was that it was able to do that with less of the side effects. A lot of the questions we ask actually come from grassroots. How do you get drugs to a village? Because otherwise people have to walk for days to get their drugs and they die before they get there. In listening to the questions on the ground, the questions of how best to manage patients and importantly cost effectively roll out treatments, for example, has, have come about. I remember clearly it was in 2002 or maybe the end of 2001, there was a meeting in Zimbabwe about possibly getting treatment to Africa and everyone was saying, this is the doctors, the nurses there, how can we do this? We haven't got the expensive tests you've got in the north. They said, well, how are we going to be able to give these drugs if we can't do these tests? So the DART trial, which was published actually in 2010, was a six-year-long trial looking at um, how to best roll out treatment in Africa to HIV patients, that this is adults, with minimal laboratory um, availability. So we did a trial looking at more clinically managed patients versus doing the more complicated laboratory testing. At the time that trial started, few patients were receiving treatment in Africa. So that was back in 2003. And 
Children weren't even being tested very much then. Once that trial started, it became very clear that, that adults were living instead of dying, and they all had children, and they had a, quite a lot of children, and some of those children were also infected. And as soon as adults got onto treatment, they started to, to think about their children. They were still bringing their children to hospital. There was a whole ethical issue then of, well, you know, this is a family disease where children may be infected as well as adults. And at the time, there really wasn't much in the way of, of even formulations for children. So one of the things we did actually within the Arrow trial was we persuaded one of the companies to, to look at scoring adult tablets. So both DART and Arrow trials came really from, from the ground. <laughs>